for your dedication to each and every one of you, even from the music team that has come yesterday to, bro to Brother Eddie and, and, and um, Brother uh, Marjorie that came in yesterday. I thank God that you know for the dedication. I pray that God they will be continually dedicated. I thank God that I know that I will always be dedicated to God's work all the days of my life. Sometimes you never know the journey of this life, but always I know one thing is that I will serve you, Lord Jesus of God. The doors of the church will always be open, O God. Oh Father Lord, no matter we can be ten, we can be five, and we can be two. God, these are the days where, Lord Jesus of God, you're removing, your God, the tears from the week. God, these are the days when we can see, we can see, Lord Jesus of God, we can take a deep look and not look around, but we can take a deep look at our, our individual self and see who we are this morning. Did we stay away? Are we away from God's house? Do we get angry and stay away? Are we, are we so worldly minded that we, you know, we value the other things more than spending just a few hours with God? Do we take time to pray? Do we say, take time to just say thank you, Jesus? Because, Lord, oh Father, I see, I see, Lord Jesus, oh God, the value of serving you, Father. There's a value above everything else. And I want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, bless those, oh God, this morning. And bring these seeds, oh God, to your house. Bless, bless this soul, oh Lord Jesus, as your word says, Father. They will be great in this, oh God. And God, you will take them, oh Father. You will give the devour for the name's sake. In Jesus, for your name's sake. In Jesus, my name.
fill it during service. You need one day, one, one day. You fill it during service. And you have to run a journey to the collective one side. Praise God. Book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, Isaiah 14. And we're going to read verse number 31. And I want to share with you on the, on the subject of rising and flying in the wind. Rising and flying with the wind. Because it doesn't help if you just rise. You've got to do something. So amen to that. So you've got to rise and fly with the wind. Isaiah 40 and verse number 31. The word of God says this. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall bow up with wings as eagles. Not just that, but they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You see, whilst others are fainting in life, you will not faint. And it's for the simple reason that you wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. It's important that we wait upon the Lord. And that's what Isaiah is saying. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So your strength comes to you as you wait on the Lord. How do you wait on the Lord? You wait on the Lord by spending time with His Word. That's how you wait on the Lord, your quiet time with the Lord. It's not, it's not so much the quantity of time that you spend, but it's more so the quality of that time. The quality of that time. An in-depth study of His Word. An intimate conversation with Him. Amen. You've got to speak to the Lord. So, as you wait upon the Lord, you'll find He renews your strength by the Spirit. He'll cause you to mount up with wings as eagles. He'll cause you to run. You'll never be tired. Whilst others in life are running and they tire out, you'll be running and you will not be weary. You will walk where others are not walking and you will not faint. Say amen to that, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I want to share with you something about the eagle. Because this is what Isaiah was talking about. Talking about the wings. You will rise up. You will mount up with wings as eagles. The eagle is one of the largest and most powerful birds in the world. It's one of the largest and most powerful birds in the world. And if God likens you to an eagle, that means you are one of the largest and most powerful beings in the world because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Talk to me, somebody. An eagle is characterized by speed. It's characterized by speed. It's characterized by power. It's characterized by strength. It's characterized by boldness. An eagle is bold. An eagle is characterized by focus. It doesn't lose focus, it stays focused. That's why you, in this journey of life, you've got to remain focused. Tell your neighbor, you've got to be focused. Because as long as you are focused on where God is leading and where God is taking you to, nothing will cause you to stumble. Talk to me, somebody. Your destiny is greater than where you get. Hallelujah. It's characterized by courage and by great vision. An eagle sees things from on high that other birds can't see. So what am I telling you? As an individual, you have great vision. Somebody say, I have great vision. I see things that nobody else can see. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, another thing about the eagle is that an eagle stays at high altitudes. An eagle stays at high altitudes. An eagle dwells at high altitudes. It doesn't live on the low ground. 
ground. It doesn't live, you know, on the ground, but it lives at high altitudes. And because it lives at high altitudes, it's able to soar higher than any other bird. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. The Bible says you and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes, the Bible says you are the head and you are not the tail. He says you'll be from above. Come on, talk to me from above and not you know. Talk to me, somebody. That is where you are. You are a child of the Most High God. Your, your habitation is high. Your altitude is high. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Now, eagles live. The reason why eagles live at high altitudes is because they can understand the thermal currents and they use that to their advantage. They can understand the current. An eagle, you know, an eagle can read the wind, can read the temperatures in the wind. It can sense when the storm is brewing. And when a storm is brewing, unlike the other birds, other birds, when a storm is brewing, other birds will fly away. But an eagle will not fly away. An eagle will fly against the storm. An eagle flies towards the storm. While others in life are running away from the storm, you are flying towards the storm because the storm is what's going to propel you to greater heights. Talk to me. Hallelujah. You know when you, when you, the higher you go, the more you begin to feel the currents of the wind. If you've ever been in an airplane, you know it. Because when you're on the ground, everything is just normal, you can like this. But the minute that plane takes off, once it starts reaching higher altitudes, then you begin to feel the wind. Because the wind is there on top. Come and talk to me, somebody. And if you ever question why the storms are coming towards you, it's because that is where you are. You are on top of the storm and not below. That's why many times people may question, but Lord, why are these things happening to me? Why am I going through these things? It's because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You are a child from above and not below. You feel stuff and things come your way. Because listen, God wants you to be strong during the storm because you're going to go high.
If you go to a pigeon coop, you will not find an eagle. The eagles do not dwell on the ground like chickens. Amen. And you know something about an eagle, when you see an eagle at flight, when you see it in the air, I don't know if you've watched these documentaries, I love documentaries, but you see how this eagle, when it soars, there's just something majestic and something beautiful about it. You see it in its majesty. Hallelujah. You see it in its beauty. Hallelujah. Because they were created and meant to live above. It looks, you know, if you were to see it on the ground, it wouldn't really capture your attention. But when you see it in the sky, you just see how it glides. It's, it's amazing. Amen? Hallelujah. And that is what I want to share with you this morning, is that when you are where you're supposed to be, your beauty will radiate. Your beauty will become known. You understand? Because when you are where you're supposed to be, in other words, when you're soaring above your storm, Remember, we all go through the same challenges in this life. But the difference is there are those that are doing it in their own strength, and then there are those that are doing it in the strength and ability of God. And the beauty is seen where God gives you the supernatural strength and the supernatural ability and the supernatural grace to do what is not common unto man and to achieve it. And when those who are waiting for the same thing look at you, it causes them to question and ponder and say, you know what, there's just something about you. I don't understand it. Can you please tell me why? And then you can tell them, by the grace of God, I am what I am. You can tell them about, you know, our loving Father, our loving God, we so rich in grace, plenteous in mercy and compassion. Say amen to that. Amen. You see, God created you to, to dwell in the top places of life. Because when you operate below, whenever you operate below where you're supposed to be, you'll find that you will struggle because you are out of your element. You are not where you should be. Hence you find it becomes a struggle. Because now, when you operate out of your element, out of your habitat, you are doing it in your strength, in your ability. It becomes difficult, it becomes hard. But when you, when you are where you're supposed to be, hallelujah, in the presence of God, when you're doing it in God's strength, in God's ability. That's why even, you know, when you go to work, when you go to school, in the morning, spend some time with God. Let God refuel you. Let God energize you. Let God give you strength so that when you go to your workplace, when you go to your school, you'll find that you'll be You'll be so full of hope, so full of courage, so full of faith that in spite of what comes your way during the day, God, you know, just those quiet moments, those, those few moments you spend with God makes all the difference to your day. Because remember, you understand, people have problems and you have the solution to those problems. But you find that people that go about their day in their own strength and problems come, all of a sudden they're out of solution and they say, but you know, it's too much for me. I can't do this. I can't take this. Why? It's your own strength. You're out of your element. But when God, when you spend time with God, God will give you at that moment when that problem comes, God will give you the wisdom. Remember Jesus said, do not worry what you ought to say. 
but it will be given unto you in that hour, that moment. You understand? So every time during your day, when you spend time with God and a problem comes your way, it's your time to shine. It's your time to shine. You never ever shine away from it. You, you take it head on and you say, thank you, Jesus. This is my time to shine. It's time. Those are things that make, that get you recognized in your workplace. Say amen to that. Deuteronomy chapter number 28 and verse 13. The Lord says this, And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath. Hallelujah. The Lord will make you what? The head. To make you the head. Another translation says God will make you the top dog. Hallelujah. You'll be the top dog. Amen. You'll not be the chihuahua. I've got nothing against chihuahuas. But God will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and you shall not be beneath. Watch it. Take note. He says, the Lord shall make you. And when God is, listen, when God makes you, he establishes you. And there's nothing that anybody or anything can do to change that order. Because in the order of things, God says he'll make you the head and not the tail. And God says you'll be above only and not beneath. And there's nothing, nothing that circumstances, nothing that life, nothing that anybody or anything can do to change that order. Hallelujah. You see, by covenant, every child of God belongs on the top. This is the thing about the covenant we have with God. This covenant ensures that you are on the top only. You never beneath. This covenant ensures that you are always the head and not the tail. Amen. Because you are meant to soar above and excel in life. That's your portion. That's your portion. You are meant to soar above. You see that? You're meant to soar above. And you're meant to excel in life. In other words, there's a spirit of excellence that is upon you. There's a spirit of acceleration that is within you. You do, listen, you're going to get things done quicker. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. You're going to get things done quicker. Amen. Other people, it may take them 10 years. You, it might just take you 10 days. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Can I get somebody that's close to you get excited about this? There's a spirit of acceleration that is within you. And I just feel God is confirming His word. Last week I shared with you about the man of God. Come on, Ahab had already gone before him. The man of God rose up, he girded the loins of his garment, he began to run. And he overtook Ahab, he overtook the horses. I'm here to speak to somebody. You're going to overtake them horses in life because you have a spirit of acceleration on the inside of you. There's a spirit of excellence that is upon you. Come on, you're going to deal valiantly. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah! Oh, Jesus! I want you just quickly just to shout your name. Shout your name. I can't hear you. Shout your name. The mighty person of valor. Whoa! You are a woman of valor. You are a man of valor. Come and talk to me, somebody. You are a person of valor. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. You were born again to be a high flyer in this life. You were not born again for nothing. You were born again to be a high flyer in this life. You're going to fly high. You're going to go higher and higher. Come and talk to me. Don't cry in those storms of wisdom. The purpose of those storms is to propel you to greater heights. Talk to me, somebody. Don't limit yourself. Come and tell your neighbor, don't limit yourself. You've got to raise the bar. Ah, come and tell somebody you've got to raise the bar in your life. Because the Bible says when the enemy comes in as a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard which cannot be matched, which cannot be met. Hallelujah! There's a standard that has been set.
shift in your life, your job is to maintain that standard. You've got to maintain that. How do you maintain that? By raising the bar. You've got to raise the bar. Tell your neighbor you've got to raise the bar. The reason you've got to raise the bar is because you are capable of achieving greater things in this life. Hallelujah. It is not possible with man, but it is possible with God. With God, all things are possible. He says all things are possible with him who believes. The question is, what do you believe? The question is, who do you believe? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has vested great interest in God has deposited greatness on the inside of you. There's a seed of greatness that is on the inside of you. Sometimes you may feel as though things come your way or things happen in your life just to bury you. But listen, it comes your way so that you can break out of that seed. You can break out of that limitation. Talk to me, somebody. The only limitation is your mind. To greatness is your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The question is, what are you thinking? What do you believe? Hallelujah. You can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. Say that. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Do it with us. Do it with us. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me.
get above the storm. Hallelujah. And the more furious the air current, the higher the eagle goes. So the more furious your storm, the higher you will go. Amen. Tell somebody the stronger the storm, the higher you fly. Oh Jesus, somebody's looking at me with squinted eyes and saying, Oh Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. I can show you in the Bible a young man by the name of David. When there was a whole nation and a whole army that was faced with the Goliath, with the giant and the nation, come and talk to me, that was sent in battle against it. All of Israel's troops were afraid. Yet David, hallelujah, David didn't run from Goliath. David ran towards him. Because David knew, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. When he said of the Lord of hosts, he said the Lord of the angel armies. Because David knew that they that be with him are more than they that be without. David ran to Goliath. You see, when you run from your Goliath, you never get anywhere. You keep on running. What made David famous? What spread the fame of David? It's Goliath. So what's going to make you famous in this life? Your Goliath. If it was not for Goliath, they would, David would never have taken his place on the throne. So the Goliath you're facing is there to promote you. Is there to take you higher. Is there to get you to where God wants you to be. In Exodus 19 verse 4, the Lord says, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Oh my God. You have seen what I've done to the Egyptians. And how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. That was his saying, you are mine. You see, David, David read the scripture. David spent time with God. You see, he waited on the Lord in the back of the desert while he was looking after his father's sheep. You see, when you're spending time with God, God starts to speak to you. David knew who he belonged to. He knew who created him. He knew that the one who created him could turn his mess into a powerful message. He knew it. He knew that he belonged to God. He knew that how God had bore him up wings as an eagle and brought him unto himself, that he was so hidden in God that if anything was to get to him, it was to go to him through God first. So if anything wants to get to you, it has to go to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you just say, I wish you all the luck because you spend a lifetime trying to get to now come and talk to me, somebody. God is your defense. He said, you've seen what I've done to the Egyptians. So I believe that at that point, when David was faced with Goliath, he heard those words, David, my son, you've seen what I did to the bear. You've seen what I did to the lion. Now watch and see what I do to this uncircumcised Philistine. Ha! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the storms of life, brothers and sisters in Christ, we ride on the wings of the Spirit. Tell your neighbor we ride on the wings of the Spirit. And as we follow his leading and his guidance, 
guidance, we will excel in life. Because like the eagle, you will take advantage of every storm. You see, that night, when Jesus was asleep, the bottom of the boat and the storm arose, the winds were blowing, the ship started to be filling up with water, the disciples were running around like mad men. Then they come to Jesus, O oh, Master, give us the not that we perish. See, it's only when you're mad at the storm 
that you become man enough to stand it. So ask your neighbor, are you man enough for it? <laughs> because if they cry about it, they're not your man enough. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen, somebody. Praise God. So in, instead of struggling, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and show you how to turn your trials into triumphs. You see, that's God's purpose, is to turn all your trials into triumphs. But you've got to rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you and to show you how to turn it around. Amen? And if you go where the Spirit of God leads, you won't need to struggle. Tell your neighbor. If you go where the Spirit of God leads, you won't need to struggle. You don't need to struggle. Remember Samson? When they bound him. That new cord that they bound him with it became as fits. Broke out of it. And the Spirit of God led him to use a donkey jump. With a door of a jump of a, of a donkey. He's two thousand. When David stood Goliath, all of Israel was singing. Saul has killed a thousand, but David tens of thousands. So your Goliath will make you famous. Say I to you. In this season, we are riding on the wings of grace. In this season, we are riding on the wings of grace. Grace is going to propel you. Because grace is unmerited favor from God. You don't deserve it, but God gives it to you anyway. In other words, what I'm saying to you is that we have come to a place of lift and shift. I like that. We have come to a place of lift and shift. Because God has opened great doors and opportunities for his people. God has opened great doors, and I'm telling you, later, God has opened great doors and opportunities for you. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9. The Lord says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Oh, I hear this word coming now. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup run over. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my adversaries. God has said, come on, God has set the table before you. Ask your neighbor, just say to your neighbor, say this, God has set the table before you. Are you just going to stand and look or are you going to eat? Woo! I'd rather eat. To victory. Amen. Amen. Give the victory that has been set before you. Amen. Now you must understand as God brings you into the season of great opportunities, there will be required of you great responsibilities. And with great responsibilities will come great challenges. But whatever we face, always remember we are never alone. Whatever you face, you are never alone. Amen? So sometimes you may wonder, but why? Why all these challenges? Why the challenges? It's because there's a greater responsibility that God requires of you. Amen? Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43 verse 2, God says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we may go through these things, but the important thing is that we will come out better than when we went into it. Because
because God is with us. You understand, when you go into a storm, you go in one way. But when you come out, you come out another way. Because what happens is that storm kind of refines you. That form, that the storm makes you bolder. You see, if it was not for the storm of the bear, and the storm of the lion, David would not have been man enough to face the lion. So the battle, oh Jesus, uh, let me just ask by show of hands, how many of you have faced some challenges in this life? If you haven't faced God, that's your testimony, you want to come share with us. Everybody has faced a test. Everybody has faced a challenge. So, when a storm visits you, like David, learn to strengthen and encourage yourself in the Lord. Where you can say, the same God who delivered me from the bed, the same God who delivered me from the lion, is the same God who will deliver me from this such a sight of Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Remember, you're meant to be above and above all. God wants you to use the storms to your advantage and to go higher by them. That's what God wants you to do. Use the storms to your advantage and go higher by them. And the reason why we wait upon the Lord is because brothers and sisters, we cannot do it in our own strength. Nobody can overcome by his or her own power. They need the power of God. You need, tell your neighbor, you need the power of God. So wait upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our strength comes to us by feeding on the word of God. That's your food. That's your food. That's your daily bread. I want to say something. I want you to highlight this. I want you to write it down. If it's the only thing that you take out of this, just remember this, please. The reason why an eagle is able to soar high is because it doesn't eat anything dead. Rather, it eats on fresh food. An eagle doesn't eat something that's dead. It eats fresh food. It feeds on fresh food. Come on, remember, an eagle is there high above. And it's got an eye. There's something about its vision that is unique to it. And it remains focused. And once its eyesight is locked on it, they remain focused. They go towards it. You never find an eagle descending from high, descending from high altitudes to grab something to eat that's there. It only descends for something that's fresh. So what am I telling you? We have to wait upon the Lord and daily feed on His Word. Because His Word to us is fresh meat. God has got something fresh to say to you today. Sometimes, you know you can read a, you can read a scripture today. Read it tomorrow. Read it next week, read it next month, read it next year. Every time you read it, it will mean something completely different because it's fresh. Never ever say, I know this scripture. No, you don't know it. Because even one word from the scripture, it can mean so many things to you on your journey. Say amen to me. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's only when you eat on the fresh meat of God's word daily that you're able to 
mount up with wings as an eagle. You will be able to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. You will not faint in this life. You will not be weary in this life. You will be full of strength. Hallelujah. You have divine ability to accomplish the supernatural. Say amen to Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord praise. Amen. Tell somebody, I will not about you. But as for me, I'm rising. And I'm going to fly higher than I've been flying.